Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Today, my topic is about the experiential learning approaches. Adult learners bring a rich prior experiences to the learning、um, setting and are eager to show upon their background and previous learning into the、uh, classroom. So, the research by Lewis and William, 1994, suggests that an experiential、um, Learning approach is an effective way of developing all types of skills that employers seek, because the awareness of a problem and the trying and the undergoing times enable、uh, learners' cognitive reconstruction of experience put into action. So, thus, overcoming、uh, any biases that come along the journey of learning, it is a process of knowledge created through the confrontation or transformation of experience, and the process goes from. The concrete experiences to the reflection observations and to、uh, the abstract conceptualization and then to active experimentation. Okay, here is a diagram of an experiential learning model for teaching and assessment by Jackson and Isaac in 1994. Look at the diagram here. The an experiential learning model for teaching assessment is made up of five components.、Um, they are when,、uh, as we know, the、um, Box one and two here. As box one is the characteristic and needs of adult learners, which、um, compose of the、uh, role of、uh, the experience and prior、uh, knowledge, and the differences in the process of learning,、uh, active improvement in the learning process, and the affiliation needs of the, te-、uh, the learner, and also the context of adult lives. In box two. And it's it is about the conceptual foundations of experiential learning, which compose of the definitions of knowledge, the elements of connection, and the constructivist of teaching, and the reflective practice. And together, I proceed to box three, which is the methods and techniques for engaging learners in experiential learning activities, that co- which compose of the design of in-class experiences. The design of field-based experiences and the coordination and integration of in-class and in-field experiences, and proceed to box five, four, box box four, which which says the assessment processes and outcomes building a portfolio, and point in time performed assessment that com.、Uh, Consists of two parts. The first part is the artifacts, which means the artistic material, the budgets, lesson plan, and resumes. And the second part is the attestation, which is the owners,、uh, include the、uh, letters of recommendation, job performances evaluation, and proceed to pro- box. Five is say the assessment processes and outcomes, portfolio construction, assessing transitional change and cumulative learning, and which includes the self-assessment and self-reflection, and also the assessing learner progress in the program, and also the self-representation、uh, to external sources. Okay. Now in this topic, I'm going to divide that in、uh, uh, into two sections, and、uh, the first section is、uh, is about the Examples of、um, those、uh, skills that which we、uh, how to apply to the model I have just mentioned before, and the research was by Bassett and Jackson in <coughs> sorry in 1994. So the session two, I'm going to focus on the、uh, future of experiential learning approaches、uh, research by Jackson and Capellella in 1994. Okay. Now, the first section, okay, the examples applying how to apply the model to a variety of adult learning situations. I'm going to、uh, list two examples, part A and part B. So part A will be diversity learning, part B will be teacher preparation. Okay. Now, diversity learning, diversity training, part A. Now we have to go back to the diagram again. We have to look at the model again. So the diversity training, ah,、uh, that is to apply how to apply the model to a diversity training. So. Ah,、uh, so also how to implement the model to a diversity training program. So according to Bassett and Jackson, nineteen ninety four, ah, for the characteristic and needs of adult、uh, learners. Now we look at box one again. Ah,、uh, with the characteristics and needs of adult learners component, the diversity training we are looking at the differences of ah、uh, the content with differences cultural groups. Okay, and we're also looking at the differences in experiential, social, and economic pressures. 
and also uh, uh, that sustain ethnic prejudice and cultural ethnocentrism. We are also looking at the differences in the motivation to change social and attitudinal views. And number two, the diversity training. So how to implement the model to a diversity training program? By using the conceptual foundations of experiential learning, we are looking at box two. So how to apply diversity training in in, in the conceptual foundations of experiential learning. So here, we need to look at the context of instruction, whether it's heterogeneous, um, whether it is a heterogeneous or homogeneous um, group composition in different learning activities, okay? Now we go to box three now. Now, how to apply the, the diversity uh, training to the methods and techniques for engaging learners in experiential learning activities. So here, we need to know the members of a group representing minority culture, uh, their experiences with the listening, and then uh, to share their experiences with the listening group, okay? Uh, symposiums that explore factors which contribute to ethnic prejudice and role assumption exercise in which the participants place themselves in situations where they encounter some of, of the prejudice that a particular group is accustomed to experiencing. For example, learners spend time with uh, groups in which they are the minority members. And number four, look at the box box wall. So how are we going to um, apply diversity training uh, to the assessment processes and outcomes like building a, a portfolio or folio. Uh, the product, we look at the products of modeling activities, for example, the conceptual maps that interrelate uh, participants' personal uh, perceptions, attitudes and feelings about other culture, religious or lifestyle. Okay, the diversity training, so how do we implement the model to a diversity training program? Uh, using the assessment processes, outcomes, portfolio, construction in box 5. In here, we need the self-assessment portfolios affect changes in attitudes or perceptions. And we need the self-presentation portfolios that involve the evidence that a person is sensitive to and represent cultural diversity and human rights. For example, the portfolios include testimonials and uh, uh, service awards. Okay. Now, part B, we're going to look at teacher preparation. So how are you going to um, apply the teacher preparation into the model? So first one, we go to the box one again to look at the characteristics and needs of adult learners. Um, so here, for teacher preparation, we need to look at the differences in prior uh, teaching experience. We also need to look at the differences in social supports about childcare responsibilities. We also need to look at the differences in career affiliation needs. For example, my own classroom versus collaborating with other teachers. And number two, teacher pre preparation in terms of conceptual foundations of experiential learning. Uh, diff so we look at the different classroom decisions require various, various types of knowledge, uh, quick decision knowledge, knowing in actions versus constructed decision knowledge, uh, reflection in action. And this is uh, uh, applying to box two. And now another one is the, um, the reflective practice on the fundamental teaching paradigm. Okay, this is still referring to box two. So in box three, we are looking at the um, the experiential learning activities like the in terms of methods and techniques for engaging learners in experiential learning activities. So for teacher preparation, we need to pay the experience uh, show teachers returning to school uh, with beginning teacher who have numerous experience in a mental relationship. So listening groups focusing on teacher presentations about how they assess student learning. Okay, we come to box number four: teacher preparation in terms of assessment and processes and the outcome building a portfolio. Uh, we use the videos of instructional interactions with students, like complete at various parts in the program, and we also use the documented peer reviews of classroom data collection activities. Now, next one is the teacher preparation in um, box five in terms of assessment processes and outcomes. 
uh, portfolio construction. So self-representation portfolio is that promote a teacher as a team player, skilled technicians in differentiated instructional programming, and student advocate. So the self-reflection portfolio is to enhance a teacher's ability to assess current strengths and future professional development needs. All right. Now we have already looked at different kind of skills and how and how they are applying to the model. Uh, the five uh, boxes that I have mentioned before. Now we come to the second section of the uh, the topic, which is the uh, uh, to focus on the future of experiential learning approaches. So in order to improve the experiential learning methods, we must focus on the human diversity, we must focus on the social affiliation patterns and transfer of learning, and also we must focus on the uh, authentic assessment. All right? Now, I will detail each one of them. First, human diversity. So according to um, Jackson and Cabrera in 1994, so by coming out, becoming aware of human diversity and how they affect learning, it is a vital step in any educational program. So overcoming in fears, um, discerning unique uh, needs of individual learners and also the aspirations in activity that, activity that program design uh, decision uh, approaches students more as individuals and less as members of a uh, population. To focus on what is um, strong position about themselves and able to protect themselves from the negative experiences. Okay. Next one, uh, about social affiliation patterns. So to focus on the um, experiential learning methods, we must also know that the social affiliation patterns is, for example, uh, storytelling as an instructional device uh, to enhance social context of mutual support and appreciation, and uh, provide support for each other, both instructors and the participant enhances certainty. Right. Now, number three, to focus on experiential learning, we must focus also on the uh, transfer of learning. So, how does it go? So, it like the effective applications of what has been learned in a program to other life situations. Okay. Now, to skill transfer regarding uh, interaction with peers in the professional development setting, and also through an active um, network of relationships, uh, produces a successful educational program. And right, finally, we also have to apply the future focus on experiential learning on the authentic assessment, like to um, evaluate the growth and change and to emphasize informity as the major outcomes of instructions. And also the po uh, folios and portfolios related to specific adaptation to change and to the conditions of specific contents and the measurement of successful experiences and individual, professional, and that show the uniqueness of a person, okay? And let's conclude by today's topic on the uh, experiential uh, learning approach. And in conclusion, we must summarize them. And first of all, uh, we learned that today the experiential learning approaches may be a more effective way of um, developing skills that employers seek. And also, it might be an, a, a, a more effective model for teaching assessment. Um, as I have just uh, draw out the model, there are five components in there and those five components are very important. And uh, also we learned that to improve the experiential learning approaches, we must focus on the four factors, which is human diversity, social affiliation patterns, and the transfer of learning. And also we must focus on the authentic assessment, okay? Now this concludes my today. Um, uh, in the topic of uh, experiential learning approach. And uh, my next topic will be the feminist pedagogy. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned and goodbye.